Welcome to Carolina Classrooms. I'm your host, Lemuel Watson. Over the last two decades, some of our schools have struggled with recruiting, retaining, and supporting teachers. Throughout this program, we will talk to superintendents, deans of education, teachers, and students who will share their perspectives about best practices for supporting and enhancing teacher satisfaction in South Carolina. The supply and demand reports released by the Center for Educator Recruitment, Retention, and Advancement show a number of teachers leaving the classroom and that many students are reluctant to enter education careers. I think it, the numbers are getting a little bit worse, but I do think there is cause for hope because there is more attention on the issue now. And so more things are being done to address it and more steps are being taken to try to encourage more young folks to come into the profession. And in particular with our early year teachers, those in their first, say, five years of teaching, more is being done to focus on the kind of support that they need so that they won't be as likely to leave. I always like to find a positive and I think one positive is that we have seen the retention issue, the teachers leaving, either hold steady or go down slightly in terms of fewer teachers leaving. So I think that's a positive. We can't expect an overnight miracle and I think that coupled with the increased awareness at the state level of the need to support teachers. I think there's hope that we will continue to improve in terms of the number of teachers who stay. And then of course the other piece is more teachers coming into the profession as well. In order to retain teachers, it's important to know why they are leaving the classroom. It's very difficult to have real concrete data on that because many teachers who choose to leave are reluctant to be completely frank about why they're leaving. But anecdotally, we have a lot of information to support the fact that teachers leave either because they feel overwhelmed, they don't feel like they were fully prepared for what they encountered as a first year teacher, they don't feel supported, um, they, they sometimes say it's pay, but we find that although pay is certainly an issue, it's not the primary reason why people leave. It's more to do with frustration, overwhelm, being overwhelmed, um, too much paperwork, lack of autonomy, you know, freedom to teach the way they want to teach, feeling like they have to teach to the test, those kinds of things. I think they get frustrated at the workload that they have, um, the expectations that seem to be very overwhelming. Um, that's what I hear mostly from the teachers that I think are tottering on, you know, do I need to leave this profession? I think the other um, critical thing that concerns them that makes them want to leave is that they don't feel supported. Um, they don't maybe they don't understand the policies or the rules for things and they don't feel supported by administration so that is a key if they don't feel supported they don't want to be there and then i think the third thing is and i hear my own faculty talking about this they come to work every day because they feel like they're part of a team and they said and then you'll hear them say to each other if you weren't here if you weren't here i wouldn't be coming you know they come because they feel part of something bigger than them. And I think that to keep teachers in the profession, you have to create that sense of, of collaboration, of teamwork, of, you know, um, we're, we're in this together and we're all supportive professionals. And that, I think, is what is going to keep, keep more teachers in the profession, is we can encourage that sort of thinking and that, provide that kind of support. The other stuff I'm not sure we can do much about at this point. We're going to have the regulations, we're going to have all of the requirements, but um, when they feel supported and part of something larger than themselves, they are pretty dedicated. To keep teachers in the classroom, um, there has to be a lot of support, I think, also, not only from the administration and staff and things like that, but also from parents. So another issue I run into is I want the students to do well in class 
and I need them to and want them to be successful. And I might contact home if there's some issues going on personally that um, may be affecting their behavior in class, but sometimes I'm not always receptive to the parents' feedback or they might not answer or things like that. So having parent interaction and support is also, I think, necessary for teachers to want to keep doing that. Because we're all in this together, so we need everyone on board. I think the research shows that at the national level that teachers who have strong support and strong mentors um, are more likely to stay in the classroom. You know, it's like any profession when you finish school and you go out into the field for the first time, there's a lot that you haven't yet experienced and haven't yet mastered. And so being there to support first year teachers and to guide them and assist them and let them know it's okay if they're not, um, they don't have all the answers. And the administration plays a role in that as well. I think you can look around wherever you live and the principals and the superintendents that have a good reputation and a good reputation for supporting teachers and supporting their staff those are the ones that don't lose their teachers. The ones that have a reputation for there being constant chaos are the ones where there's constant turnover. We do have an induction program um, in the district where new teachers do meet um, on a regular basis um, to talk about different topics that first year teachers that may be incurring. We also have curriculum facilitators in each of our schools who we deem as our curriculum um, experts that are there to go in, do model lessons, demonstration lessons, team teaching with teachers. We also um, have an expectation that our administrators are not just administrators, but we want them to be instructional leaders. And therefore, we have the support of our administrators going in classrooms as well, supporting teachers. And I think at the end of the day, it all boils down to coaching not just the judgmental part of what you're doing wrong, but how can I refine and help you and coach you to getting it right. And so just putting that positive spin. Um, we also provide professional development um, for our teachers internally and external. Um, we try to take advantage and tap into any offerings through our State Department of Ed. Um, making sure that we are connected to various associations like the Association for Early Childhood, um, the IRA, International Reading Association, and making sure that we're providing opportunities for our teachers to network and learn and grow from others as well. Good leadership. Our principals take care of and our administrative staff, we take care of teachers. We've had um, district teachers of the year from other districts come and work with us um, because I think they see the exciting um, things that we're doing with creative uh, initiatives and uh, innovative programs that um, we're able to put in. There are things that we do uh, to provide complete services for our students and innovative services for our students and I think teachers see that and they want to be a part of it. Um, but again, it's not necessarily pay, but also they have opportunities as teachers to grow. And so we have teacher leadership positions that they can move into. Most of the rural areas that we have here in Florence County, they may have one store. So uh, even something simple as grabbing items and, and shopping becomes an issue. Also the convenience of offices, we have very few offices, usually the county seat has, in this case Florence, has most of the offices. So that's another um, disadvantage that we have. Um, housing is another issue that we run into. Uh, many times it's affordable housing, but it may not be the housing that a first year teacher is interested in moving into. Um, it may be a house versus an apartment. Um, we have very few apartments in our district and so most of the um, new teachers that we have are the beginning induction teachers actually live outside of our um, district. We have some who commute up to an hour and 15 minutes. Some live on the coast and we're about an hour and 15 minutes from the coast. And we have some who live in uh, Florence, for example, and we are approximately 24 miles from Florence. So I think those are a few um, items, that, a few things that come to mind as far as um, differences with rural uh, versus an urban area. So there's limited housing sometimes in rural areas, but there are teachers that desire to teach in rural areas. And so one idea that, that we thought would be great was to be, to be able to provide stipends or um, pay their mileage. So if you're driving more than 25 minutes or more than 25 miles one way, then pay that teacher's uh, stipend. And so that can be part 
of hopefully the rural recruitment initiative um, that last year. And if you look at the 28 school districts that received that money, 14 of those districts reported that they had improved retention um, in that district. So that's 50% right there. And so hopefully, according to the Sarah survey, they're expecting more districts to take advantage of those funds and fund innovative um, recruitment and retention um, issues. We qualify for Sarah funds for rural school districts. And with that, we've done some stipends in terms of recruitment stipends. We've done some new graduate stipends. Um, we've also um, tried to make sure that we have good mentor programs for teachers. It's hard, especially when you're just starting in the profession. And I'm a firm believer that you have to support teachers. Um, though that textbook does not give you a reality of what you're going to face in that classroom. And so making sure that we give our teachers the resources and support that we need. Um, we often say we may not be able to pay you competitively, but we can at least create an environment where you feel appreciated and supported. And those are some of the strategies that we currently use. There are no uh, fancy malls, um, you know, many of the metropolitan outlets such as theater and uh, the grand beaches and things of that nature, they're just not here. And so with prospective teachers, I tell them right away, you know, you're an hour and a half from some of the more metropolitan outlets. However, this is what we have to offer. We are family-oriented school. Uh, we have a great set of students here at Rosenwald. We have a, a community that is ultra supportive because they really wrap themselves in the resources around our school and are, you know, just kind of waiting and, and ready to help on every end from being volunteers to making uh, donations, et cetera, or just being, just showing up at an event and being present and, and being invested. And so I think that, uh, you know, the idea that a teacher could come in and tie into making a difference, a true sense and have that true sense of making a difference in a child's life and knowing that everything they're doing, you know, if they didn't do it, there might not be somebody to do it. Uh, those are, are kind of my selling points. Uh, the fantastic support that they get, opportunities, you know, for growth all along the way. Some of my teachers talk about the fact that they're able to have some flexibility in their teaching schedules and educational program of the students here. And so, you know, those, those are things that make teachers happy. They have investment, they have a certain level of, um, of control and design over how they're doing their work, and all at the same time moving toward a common vision that we've all set forth for our students. Superintendents and principals are not alone in working to support teachers. Local colleges and universities have partnerships with schools in their area. Our partnership schools are our entire 19 area counties. Um, we have a consortium um, where we meet once a month with those area superintendents. And we have partnerships when we have student teachers, they get to request um, where they would like to go for their internships. All of those districts are willing to accept our students and we have a lot of conversation back and forth as to what the best fit for that student might be in terms of school, in terms of personalities of teachers. Um, and then the majority of our graduates end up hired in those partnership schools. I moved a lot as a child. I attended nine schools before I graduated. And so I, I, knew, I know what teachers did for me. That extra constant, that encouragement, that extra person just being there, how that helped me. You know, I would not have adjusted well if I would not if I would not have had good teachers. And I also seen good teachers and bad teachers. And I know the negative influences the bad teachers have. And I know how that how that messed with me and how the good teachers that's that's the only reason I'm successful now. And so I guess seeing that and seeing the impact that they made on me, I know that I can be that positive impact to somebody else. I'm very excited about a, a program that we're designing right now as you and I speak. Um, several representatives from our faculty are over meeting with the personnel in Charleston County School District, personnel from Trident Technical College, and personnel from the Citadel. And what we're, we haven't officially named it yet, but we, we're calling it um, Teach Local. 
and um, we're going to go into high schools. Hopefully, we can um, begin next um, fall with the pilot um, in some high schools here in Charleston County. Um, but to recruit students in the high schools um, to get them to consider teaching as a as a, a career. And to begin that process, um, Trident would offer um, coursework to um, for dual credit while the students are in, in high school. And then um, Dr. Thornley, who's president over at Trident Technical College, has offered for those students to go to Trident for a year after high school with all, only what they pay in grand and aid, so the, there will be no tuition for those students. Um, and then we're working on reducing tuition for them then to come over here to the college or to go to the Citadel um, for two years and complete the, um, complete the teacher education program. We're excited about this for a number of reasons, but one, um, Dr. Postal Wade has um, offered to compensate these students when they're in the, in the Charleston County Schools working in their field experiences or in their clinical internship. We used to call it student teaching. and um, So we're, we're pretty excited. We think we might be able to reach a population of students who may not have considered um, teaching because per perhaps their families couldn't afford it. Um, but this would be a way to give them lots of practical experiences, lots of support. We think that the other thing we need to do is to offer residencies, um, perhaps in the summer between when they complete their teacher education program and go to work, particularly in Title I schools, to have some residencies and some mentoring um, throughout those first two years of teaching so that, um, so that they can meet with success. We have a partnership network with nine districts that surround the university and within those districts schools apply to be part of what we call a partnership network and within that partnership network we work together faculty and school representatives and teachers to really ensure that we are not only preparing teachers for the schools in which they will be working but also helping support teachers who are currently teaching. We have um, a school liaison, one person from each school who meets with us about every six weeks throughout the year and we look at, at curriculum and we look at experiences and things that we can do better as well as um, professional learning that we can provide. So one example that we were getting from principals was you know, the students have a great knowledge of their content and they're coming with some experiences but they really struggle sometimes with the beginning of the year, you know, how to hit the ground running. So um, we worked together to craft what we call a year-long internship. So our students, our candidates, during that last year of their program actually start when teachers start. So if their work days start on August 8th, then our teacher candidates start on August 8th. They experience the life of the school from the beginning to the end. They're able to have those teacher work days, so they have the pro same professional development as teachers do at the beginning of the year. They work with their um, mentor teacher to talk about how the room should be set up, how to um, organize classroom management, how to have a parent meeting. So by having that beginning experience, they're able, when they go to their school and start their year as a teacher, they have a background knowledge of, okay, this is what I need to do during teacher work days. This is how I start communicating with parents. Um, and it has really made a difference, I think, in the preparation. And I think what we find sometimes is principals are more apt to hire those interns that were in their school the whole year. They have much less to do in terms of preparing them to work in the building because they've been there for the whole year. They even go back after exams because every teacher should have the experience of working with students before the holiday break and how to keep their attention and how to keep them engaged. They start up again in January when the teacher starts, so starting a new semester. How do you change classes? How do you get grades in? How do you do exams? And then follow that schedule until they graduate in May. It really gives them the full life of the picture, and I think that helps prepare them for the reality of teaching. They really get a true picture of what my life as a teacher is going to be and are ready for that experience. I think that is really the most important most preparational tool that they give us because those experiences allow us to see how the school day works on a full-term basis from 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, being there especially in our year-long internship from when the teachers start really gives us a chance to see 
how professional development, how teacher work days, how all those things play into the beginning, the first day of school. And I think being there in our internship from the first day really allows us to get that classroom management piece in terms of how do we set rules and procedures and expectations and the kids really see us as one of their classroom teachers, not as just someone who's here for a few days or a couple weeks and is going to leave, but really gives us a chance to get into that role and give us that experience. Alternative certification is another option for training and recruiting teachers. The GATE program in Greenville provides extra support for career changers who are interested in teaching. The GATE program, it stands for Greenville Alternative Teacher Education Program, and it's the only one of its kind in the state. It's an alternative certification program for people who want to become teachers, but they didn't go through a typical undergraduate program or have their teaching license. It's a three-year program, and it's structured so it's a cohort model. That, and what that means is that there is a summer institute that they go to prepare to be the teacher. Um, then they start teaching their first year as the regular classroom teacher. Uh, and then during that first year, we have lots of professional development activities that are, that are created by our program and that are taught by the experts in Greenville County Schools. And that continues for two years. Plus, they have two college courses that they take together. My overall experience, this is my first year, and it's been um, awesome. I guess that would be my best descriptive word. It's been um, an experience where I've gotten tons of support, resources, um, and it's really allowed me to grow as a teacher, um, especially coming from a different career path and really being able to figure out all the in, ins and outs of education. I am in my second year. I was part of the first cohort, now in the, the second year of the GATE program. It's been very positive. It's uh, lots of support uh, throughout that first year uh, with your uh, teacher support team, uh, both at the school in terms of a principal, an instructional coach, and a mentor teacher, and then at the district level with Dr. Lee, the director, and with um, an outside coach uh, who is there any time of the day via text or phone call for any questions or concerns that you may have. One of the great things that I love is all the mentors that I have. Um, I have a mentor outside the school, I have mentors in the school, um, I have mentors within the leaders of the GATE program, so I have lots of resources that I can reach out to that are local who can come in my classroom and help me with a problem, or I can just send them a quick email and then they're able to respond to me that way. So it really provides me different levels and opportunities of support when I have challenges within the classroom. Yes, the extra support that we provide is critical to the difference, but it's also the important criteria why I think our teachers are doing so well. Everywhere you hear is that first-year teachers need more mentoring and support no matter how they, how they come to the profession. So we intentionally established this program to provide lots of mentoring and support. So each teacher has five different people on their team that are dedicated to them. We do coaching and mentoring in the first year, a great deal of that. Um, and we look at their areas of strength and their areas for growth and help them in those areas. This model really was created because of the shortages in teacher education. It is focused on the needs of Greenville County, but that is represented you know, statewide. We have various supportive people in the community, but by and large, Public Education Partners is the organization that provides a tremendous amount of support. They do provide funding for the program to help alleviate the financial costs so that the, the uh, teachers don't have to pay that. But I think more importantly, they provide what we call thought partnership. We meet and we talk about the curriculum of the GATE program. They help us in recruiting. Uh, I think I hit the jackpot. <laughs> I think I hit the jackpot. I think that the, the teacher that uh, I was responsible and assisting with the hiring of that person is phenomenal. And, um, you know, again, our, the, South, the profile of a South Carolina graduate, world skills, life skills, perseverance, all those different pieces, those that have not been in the teaching profession, that have not gone through a traditional progression through the program, come in with those skills. So when kids ask, well, how does this specific math problem, how's it going to help me in life? That person's able to have has more life, worldly 
uh, job experience outside of the teaching profession that they can bring back into the classroom. I think having that opportunity to not only see not just what you learn in the classroom behind a book and you know yes you're reading writing all those technical things that you learn in a classroom are su super important but the aspect of I can bring into a classroom of what you might really experience on a day-to-day -day job um, that actually relates to what you're learning in the classroom and be able to actually spark that interest in a kid to say hey you're going to actually use this you know and you can use it in this career field or I've seen it used here to be able to take those experiences and really relate it back to what they might be interested in and to be able to share my experiences where I've been able to use it has definitely um, been able to also make connections with kids who maybe aren't making a connection with that particular subject and it really draws them back in. It's gratifying. Good job today guys. And working with children every day you can see the expression on the face each and every day. Uh, you can see the difference that you make in that's invaluable. It's like a roller coaster. You never know what to expect. One day you're on an ultimate high. One day you're really working with a student who's challenging you or is just having a challenging day themselves. So each day is something new and it brings a different reward every day. We will continue this conversation on our website and we'll introduce you to some South Carolina students who are working to make a difference in their schools and to make their voices heard. Who was your favorite teacher? Who inspired you? Share your stories with us and join us for our next episode celebrating teachers. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.